This is the WBC Featherweight Championship. Now, interesting, Dan Rayfield, we saw two world title fights in the featherweight division this past weekend. Spectacular last-second TKO for Ray Ford of the United States to win uh, one of the titles. The other title held by Luis Alberto Lopez. He was victorious by knockout against his Japanese opponent. Same card, same ring. Both of those in Verona, New York at the Turning Stone, Turning Stone Resort. All right, this is another featherweight world title fight. This is Ve Ray Vargas, the WBC 126-pound champ, fighting England's Nick Ball in kind of the neutral ground of Saudi Arabia on this undercard of Joshua and Ngannou. All right, pretty well a 50-50 fight. And interesting, look at the plus money all over the board for knockout or decision for Vargas and Ball. Ball, an obvious up-and-comer. Vargas has got world title experience over under again, 10 and a half rounds. All right, Dan, handicap it uh, because obviously the featherweight division hot right now at the end of February and early May with title fights. So to one thing you said, it's on neutral territory in uh, Saudi Arabia because Nick is from England and Vargas is from Mexico. I view it as more of Nick Ball's territory in the sense of you know, Queensberry Promotions is his promoter. It's their event. Ray Vargas is with PBC. They made the deal to send them over. You know, so, you know, it's and from that standpoint, Nick Ball would be the quote unquote house fighter. But the, the thing about the fight is this. Number one, Nick Ball's about, what, five years younger and, and uh, mm -hmm. fighting at a very good level now, has that exuberance, that that youthful desire, knowing he's never been beaten before. Ray Vargas is, on the other hand, a guy that has been a very worthy champion. He's been a champion, uh, you know, for quite a while. He had a title at 122 pounds. He's now got the WBC title at 126 pounds. However, he has not fought for over a year. He's coming off a loss because in his last fight as the WBC champion, he had the option to challenge for the what was at the time the vacant WBC title in the 130-pound weight class. So in his last fight, he moved up and he fought Oshaki Foster and he lost in a pretty uh, clear decision in that fight and had to make the decision uh, to the organization. Do I decide to stay at 130 pounds or do I go back to 126 pounds where I still have a world title, which means I can still make money because Ray Vargas right. without a title at 130 is not a valuable commodity compared to if he's fighting for, uh, you know, in a world title fight with the 126 pound belt. So he made that decision. So he's back uh, in this particular spot to defend the title coming, even though he's coming off of a loss. And like I said, a long layoff and certainly older than Nick Ball. Nick Ball, conversely, is, I think, still on the upswing. You know, still a younger fighter, only about 27 years old, coming off uh, a whole string of knockout wins, except for his last fight, which was against Isaac Dogbe, who's been a, a quality fighter for the last several years, had a title at a junior featherweight, had moved up and had some hits or misses. But he looked really good in that fight. That was an elimination fight. That was a tremendous uh, performance by Nick Ball. And he got yep. the win, and that's what gave him this opportunity because even though Vargas owes a fight to the interim champion, Brandon Figueroa, they got the permission from the WBC because Figueroa was on the shelf for a little while to go forward and do this fight first instead. So, therefore, it's why this is happening. But Nick Ball, like I said, fighting at a really good level, has a good winning dog bay in the last fight. That took place in November. So, it's, again, he's coming off of a very short turnaround time. Again, activity where the other guy has been on the shelf for 13 months. Before that, uh, unfortunately, Nick was involved in a fight that was another one of the big shows uh, where his opponent, he knocked him out in the 11th round and wound up in a coma in the hospital. Didn't die, thankfully, but obviously that was a pretty severe situation. But I'm just making the point there that Nick Ball is fighting at a really good level, and he's beaten pretty good opponents. And uh, I think that Vargas has been getting a little long in the tooth. It's going to be hard maybe to come back after fighting at 130 to come back all the way to featherweight. Uh, and like I said, long layoff. And, you know, this, if you're going to pick the underdog or pick the challenger, let's say, this seems like the reasonable spot to do it. I feel like that Ray Vargas is a little bit past his best day. He's still a good fighter, but uh, you make me pick on this show, and I'm picking Nick Ball, and I like him by decision. I don't think either guy has got – even though Nick's got a bunch of knockouts, um, he's not like a devastating puncher, and Ray's always seemed to take a pretty good shot. So my pick was uh, Nick Ball by decision. Obviously, I take over 10.5. Um, and I think this is going to be an interesting fight, whether he can force Ray Vargas, you know, into a little bit more of a, of a slug fest where Vargas can sort of keep them on the outside with the jab and make him more of a boxing match, in, in which case I would still give Nick Ball a chance to win the fight. But it might just not be as exciting for us to watch it. Let's put it like that. Interesting that Vargas turned pro in 2010. 
when Nick Ball was 13 years old. He's now 27 when you're talking about the age gap. And and, and Vargas is a Mexican fighter turned pro in his teenage years, obviously, uh, in that. But still, um, he's younger, Ball. Is he hungrier here in this? You make a good point about Vargas having to make the weight. We're going to be concerned about that on Thursday as they do the weigh-in. Is there a weight issue for Ray Vargas to make 126 and defend this title or not? I don't know that. I'm just putting it out there. All right, let's lock it in. I'm with you. I think Why the Brit agree from Liberty. You agree with I just, you, they, they ask us to make the picks, and I'm not just going to be contraire mon frere. I, I'm not doing it just to, you know, be opposite you. I'm here to get wins like you are. I hear you. Uh, I'm going to take Nick Ball by decision, just like you in this. I think he is crowned a world champ, and I think he's now uh, right there in the mix, along with Ray Ford, Luis Alberto Lopez, and anybody else at featherweight here when this is all done. Uh, look at uh, Martin Lawrence. I don't know if that's the actor. is saying he likes uh, Ray Vargas here in this one. Interesting in the in the chat, people are going on and on. Uh, about how this is an exciting fight. This is maybe one of the fights to watch on the card, if not the fight to watch on the card for the action uh, for Ball and his enthusiasm. Again, he got the win over Dog Bay, as you mentioned, the former world champ. You and I agree. We're going to take Nick Ball by decision. And again, by extension, we love to talk about this when we handicap. Might as well take the over. Yes, you have to lay a little bit. But if you believe in the decision, then you're automatically believing in the over uh, here, 10 and a half rounds. So Rayfield and I will both take that. Uh, here coming up. So uh, that's going to be a very intriguing fight, middle of the afternoon on Friday. 